Josh from Multiversity here on this busy, busy Friday at New York Comic Con with the team behind Magus, John Price and Rebecca Isaacs. How are you guys doing today? Great. How are you? Very, very good. Congratulations on the engagement. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. We're, we're, we're exposing that to, uh, to the world. Hear that world? They're getting married. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you have a registry? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, we'll put it on this. We'll, we'll put it on the site. We'll put it on the site. It'll be at like Midtown or something. Nice. We'll be the first yeah. person to have a wedding registry at, at Midtown. Midtown Comics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, Magus just wrapped up uh, a little while ago. Uh, what was it like putting out? Uh, I'm assuming this is the first creator-owned work that you've done together. Uh, yeah, it's actually it was my first book in general, um, and yeah, it was it was yeah. our first book the first together. First creator for me too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was great. Volume five, volume one just wrapped up, so issue five came out in June, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, so it was it was a it was a great time. What was it like, uh, kind of getting your toes wet in comics? Amazing. I mean, I always wanted to write uh, in any way I could. I always loved comics growing up. I, m Gru was my first comic I ever read, and then I got into you know Spider-Man and X-Men. And to be able to write comics and actually have a comic book that I wrote, it was pretty awesome. Um, I have to. I also have to say, it was co-created with my buddy Dave Norton, who couldn't be here this weekend, unfortunately. But um, he was. He wrote number five, and he did an amazing job on it. I just want to make sure. I, before I forget. I need to say that. <laughs> so what was it like developing a, a basically a universe from the ground up? You take very much a real world approach with the book. It's very much centered in reality, but then it diverges pretty wildly. Yeah, it was really fun. I mean, whenever you can world build, um, it, it's there's nothing like it because you're literally able to put whatever spin you want on it and to fit what we wanted to do in in the real world and sort of play with real history and real events. Uh, that was the most fun to me because you could put the spin on you know Ben Franklin that he wasn't he he was ma he had magic like abilities and. Uh, that was why he had so many inventions and was so charismatic and was so all over the place and you could explain these historical events sort of within our framework and it's really fun to be able to do something like that because you literally have the entire world to play with, you know? So it was, it was great. Rebecca, in designing uh, the book, did you approach it any differently than you would have a company-owned character or, or scenario? Um, not really. I mean, I, I guess it was different in what I'd done before since uh, uh, I'd only done superhero stuff before, so I was able to just work with real people, no crazy costumes or spandex. Um, so, I mean, I guess the challenge was just to make everything feel as realistic as possible. Um, and uh, so it was just a lot of, like, countryside and small town streets and all the little details that go into that. And Because it has to feel really grounded and really realistic for the win magic finally starts appearing for that to feel really out of place and really alien. But also as real as possible. Yeah, you know, I yeah. think you did a great job with that. So. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> How did you go about developing the um, kind of the general look of the magic itself? It seemed, well, while you were drawing on a, a lot of different visual keys with it, it seemed like you were also trying to put your own spin on it. So I'm wondering how like like, you know, it's, you say magic, but that can be so many different things. I'm wondering, like, how you approach that visually. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I really, I didn't think about it as much as I should have, probably. I just, I knew that it had to be really obvious, because if you're doing a TV show about magic, you don't really have to show the magic happening. You know, you can opt out of doing, like, a magical aura around things, because you can see things move. You know, you can see people, like go Alakazam and then like something can just move. You don't have to show the magic power transferring to that object. But in comics, because it's just still images, you have to actually literally show the magic happening. So I just thought of it as like like some sort of plasma almost that appeared around the people using magic and the objects being used. And um, But a lot of that is owed to the colorist too. Like it, it wouldn't have looked anything as cool as it did uh, without Charlie doing the awesome job he did with the, the blue and, and red and green like glows around it. And I remember what you actually like when we when you first drew the first one. I remember it was a little it was really clean. And I remember we talked about it being a little bit more raw and rough and like jagged yeah. rather than just so perfectly shaped. Yeah, yeah. You don't want it to look like fairy godmother and Cinderella, right. you right. know. Because so. it needed to come from like an organic, real place. Yeah, so. yeah. So 
Um, was this a story you kind of had been, is this like a childhood dream story? Is this something as soon as you had the opportunity to, to write a comic you came up with? Like how long has this been percolating? I came up with this idea eight, nine years ago um, and I was living in, in Florida at Universal Studios, uh, I was working at Universal Studios in the back lot and I would go into the commissary and see these like costumed characters just eating fried chicken and eating paninis and it was really funny watching these costume characters do that and I started thinking about all this like fantastic situations in real the real world and just that all came kind of out of that but yeah I'd been I've had this idea in my head for years and when I got Dave I realized how big it was gonna be I had to get Dave involved to sort of help me wrangle things and come up with some awesome bad guys and things so um, without that I don't know if we would have shaped me just the way it ended up being um, and it needed a long time to sort of percolate and uh, rest in, in my brain so that I could actually I think build the world as as uh, fully as we did so what was it like um, working together and also doing other things together in, in real life? <laughs> I mean, fun. Uh, it was great. I mean, we, we lived together, so whenever Rebecca would have questions, she could just yell down to my office. And be like, what did you want for this? And I was, I'd be like, I don't know. Just draw whatever, and she would, and it would be amazing. Because I wanted to give her as much freedom as possible with everything. The only like the major story parts would I really have an issue with, but everything else, like design stuff, you know, how things really looked, I it was up to you. I mean, it was I trusted you so much to do it and and tell a great story. Also, that it, you know, damn straight. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really get that uh, that kind of hominess on Angel and Faith. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I I'm still given a lot of freedom, but yeah, d definitely not as much. And I mean, the, the thing about working with in it with a couple too is that like you can kind of get away with just being like no I don't I don't want to change that I it, it's this way and I'm gonna do it this way yeah, you know you definitely you were really honest either. you were really honest with everything if something sucked you were like this does not work this sucks and I was like that hurts to hear a little bit but I appreciate it <laughs> yeah yeah well I, I said it nicer than that a little bit nice no not always <laughs> Sometimes. So the way the book ended, it made it very clear that uh, there's more story to tell here. Do you want to speak to any future plans for the franchise? Yeah, we, we, we have a plan to go a long time, if possible. I mean, it can. we have a finite story and ending, ending point in mind. Um, we already know what it is, unlike maybe the producers of Lost, maybe who maybe didn't know. <laughs> I think they maybe had an idea, but, but we definitely had it. We have an end point in mind. We know where it's, gonna, where it's going. So we're hoping uh, the trade supposed to, for volume one supposed to come out uh, in late spring. Uh, early, I think late spring, and then we might do something along with that. But Rec is obviously tied up for a little while with Angel and Faith, so we're gonna figure out what we want to tell the whole story. So we're gonna try to do it at some point. It's just a matter of being a creator on book. We sort of have to be mindful of cost and um, how much time we can devote to it without doing paying work. Because you know, with creator on stuff, it's very tricky to make money, make make money, and make a living doing it. Um, we love doing it. We want to do more. So hopefully. Fingers crossed we will do more soon. Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Wedding Registry, Midtown Comics. Don't miss it. Thanks a lot, guys.